One of the things that I wanted to do after I retired was to try to find out a little bit more about me. And so that's what this video is about today. Who am I really? So one of the things that I wanted to do after I retired was to do some investigating about my own trajectory of family and to try to figure out maybe if I was predisposed to some health conditions that I might want to be aware of as I get older. So I contacted 23andMe.com. Now, there are multiple websites out there that do this kind of thing, but, you know, the luck of the draw, I chose 23andMe. And they sent me a, a little package with a tube in it, and they wanted to collect my DNA. And they do that by having you spit into this tube. Now, they have to have a certain amount of saliva and it took me about 18 spits <laughs> to get enough in there to actually get the tube where they wanted it. Now, one of the reasons for that is because you're not allowed to drink anything for even water for about 30 minutes before they collect the sample. And so, you know, you're already kind of dry and uh, it was just, it was just, it was awful. But anyway, I got the sample collected. I put it back in the box. It comes with a pre-addressed box, you know, postage paid. Sent it back. And I downloaded the app, and, and the app kept informing me of kind of where we were in the process. They'd received my sample. They were running the tests. They got the test done. Now they're running all the reports, you know, on and on. Until finally, I got what I was looking for. And so... I wanted to just kind of share a little bit about what I found out. Some some things I already knew were suspected. A couple of things were a little surprising. Fortunately for me, there was no bad news. Let's just get that out up front. In looking at my DNA, there, there are certain markers that are only given to you by your mother. And there are certain markers that are only given to you by your father. So, for instance, my mother would have gotten that marker from her mother, from her mother, from her mother. My dad would have got his marker from his dad, that dad, the next dad, and so forth. And we already know that if you were to look at sort of the evolutionary path of man, if you want to call it that. Now, I'm a believer in Scripture. I'm a believer in the creation I think there's a lot of leeway in that story about, you know, certain things. But I do believe that we are put here by God, whether that was 6,000 years ago or 600,000 years ago. I, I don't choose to, uh, to debate. What we do know from DNA is that we all come from basically a very small geographic area in Africa. And from Africa... People moved, migrated, whatever. So one of the things that the DNA report showed me was that through this marker handed down to me by my mother, it showed me where the original mother would have come from. Um, now keep in mind, there might have been 10,000 women there, but this particular strain only survived in one to be moved. And so over the course of time, that migration is pretty clear as it comes up through from Africa, as it comes up through um, toward what is now modern Europe and then over toward Western Europe. And then my dad's marker started about the same place with that original male and also worked its way up. Not quite as not quite the same trajectory as my mom, but, you know, north and toward Europe. And so looking at that, um, you know, I, I kind of see how over the last so many thousands of years, my family tree has evolved. Now, one of the things that the report told me, if I pull this back up here on my phone, 
I am 99.9% European. Who would have thought? 77.1% of my ancestral DNA is from Britain and Ireland. That didn't surprise me either. The report says that they can, they can sort of narrow down where I might have come from uh, in those areas in 10 regions. So that includes Belfast, Glasgow, the greater London area, Dumfries and Galloway, Cardiff, which is in Wales, Merseyside, Cumbria, South Yorkshire, and Edinburgh. Now, Edinburgh would be really cool, but, you know, um, you know, they can't mark that down. That's highly likely. It is more likely that my family is from the Great Britain side of things than the Ireland side of things. I sort of suspected that because Childers typically is an English name. Uh, as I have done what little bit of study I've done on it, it means uh, the feeder of children. Most of us got our last names based on what we did in life, what our, fam what our ancestors did in life. And so my family at some point were feeders of children and became known as Childers. That that part didn't, you know, that that wasn't really new to me. One of the reasons that I got this was to sort of look for if there are any telltale markers that might make me more predisposed to certain illnesses, especially later in life. And I do have what they say is a slightly increased risk, which means it's very, very small, for celiac disease, which is, you know, this a reaction that people have to gluten. I don't have that. I might have a slightly elevated risk for it, but it doesn't appear for me. But I have an increased likelihood, not a risk, but a likelihood. I have an increased likelihood for type 2 diabetes. This, again, was not really surprising. Um, it does run in my family. <clears throat> I do know that from what they've told me in this report, uh, you know, this can be mitigated, as, as most type 2 diabetes can, can be mitigated by diet, by being a little more active, maybe losing a little weight. All the things that I'm trying to do anyway could cause me to, you know, never have a problem with type 2 diabetes. Uh, I know from all the blood work that I've had done, I've never had an elevated sugar level. So I, I feel pretty confident that, that that may not be an issue for me unless I just let myself go in my later years. And then there are, um, you know, a few things that, you know, it's kind of a crapshoot, if you will. They tell you what sort of the probability is for certain things, and you can kind of compare that to how you are. For instance, they say that there is a 76% probability that I have little to no hair on my back. Now, who really cares, you know? But they got that one wrong. <laughs> uh, there is a 58% probability that I will have developed a bald spot before the age of 40. And I think the bald spot started about 40. It's, it's gotten worse over time. And I do have, one of the reasons that my hair is cut off short, I used to have this really thick brown hair. Every time I'd go to the barber shop or a beauty salon or wherever I was getting my hair cut, they would comment on how thick my hair was and they would have to take, you know, these thinner scissors and thin it out. But when it turned gray, I got this humongous cow lick right here in the front. And then over time, I got another cow lick on this side. And there, there was no controlling that. I mean, I could sort of comb it over and spray it down, but it was just... Cow licks are hard. And so I just decided one day during the lockdowns, you know what, I'm just going to cut it off. And so I got my hair, I got my hair cut off. I keep it cut off because I don't want to mess with the, um, with the cow lick, but it also emphasizes the fact that I have lost a lot of hair back here. So, you know, that part was right. There's a lot of other things in here I won't bore you with about physical features, you know, that I, 
the likelihood that my ring finger is longer than my index finger or that my second toe is longer than my big toe. Who cares? Okay. Um, some of those things they got right. Some of those things they got wrong. I shouldn't say that right or wrong. The probability uh, was, may have been high, but you know, there's always also the probability that it won't happen. And, and so I was in the minority there. And then there are a few other uh, reports that that are available. Some you have to pay for the next tier to get unlocked. I'm not going to do that, but they're looking for uh, markers in my DNA that would so show me that I have a hereditary risk for colorectal cancer. Those markers are not present in me. Doesn't mean I wouldn't get it, but I am not genetically predisposed to it. So it's not, you know, something that I'm going to worry too much about. Another is uh, the markers that they would look for to be her, her reddit, to be genetically, let's put it that way, to be genetically predisposed to Parkinson's disease. Those markers are not there either. There are three variants they look for for a particular protein this can damage the nerves, hearts, and other parts of the body. I didn't get any of the variants detected in those three things they were looking for. So some of those more serious things, I mean, I can always have a heart attack, but I'm not genetically predisposed to a heart attack. I can get type 2 diabetes, but I'm not genetically predisposed to that. So as far as the health thing went, I, I felt pretty good about the findings. One of the most interesting things to me, I have a genetic connection to Alexander Hamilton. Yes, the Alexander Hamilton. We are descendants of a man who lived in Northern Europe about 5,000 years ago. <laughs> I don't know if I get royalties from the play uh, for that. Uh, probably not. Anyway, it was an interesting uh, venture. If I had it to do again, I don't know that I would have spent the money. But then again, if I had come up with a variant that was detected that told me that I should be looking for a particular, you know, difficulty down the road, I would be very happy that I did this. So, you know, I don't know. You tell me, have you ever tracked your ancestral roots in such a way, if you have and you care to talk about it, leave me a comment uh, in the comment section. If you have not and you would never, um, you know, and you want to tell me why, I'd be happy to hear that too. So I'm, I'm European. Big whoop. We'll see you next time.